They're really rare. More money? To um, I'm gonna have Jeff, my gemologist, check it out. What, you don't trust me? You don't think it's real? The Pawn Stars have made their names in the industry by being some of the best salesmen in the business. They know how to get a good deal and how to make sure they get the money they need to keep the deal profitable for them and their store. But that doesn't mean that everything they do is so easy. They have screwed up sometimes that have seriously affected the store in one form or another. With that being said, allow us to show you some Pawn Star deals that almost bankrupted the shop. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Number 8. Stolen Coins there are certain rules in business that you absolutely have to follow, and one of the biggest ones is that no matter its value or relevance, you do not sell stolen goods. The Pawn Stars are most definitely familiar with this rule, and they've had some times where they unintentionally have done exactly that with various results. One of the most famous occasions is when a man named Ryan came in with a shekel of Tyre, which is a silver coin that was given out in Lebanon back from 130 BC to 79 AD. They got it, and almost immediately regretted it. After the purchase, a sheriff showed up and revealed that the coin had been stolen before it was sold to them. Not by Ryan, but by someone else. So it was a stolen piece of property that had been sold many times, and thus the Pawn Stars couldn't have been held responsible. Another stolen goods incident was when they bought a series of very valuable gold coins from a woman. Turns out, the woman stole the coins from her uncle. When he came to collect his stolen property, he couldn't because the Pawn Stars had already melted them down to make prime dollar off them. He sued the shop because of this, and it was only because of a legal loophole that they were able to escape from any kind of serious repercussions. Well, the price don't sound bad, Rick. Do you do anything around here anymore besides complain? Number six, the diamond scandal. Not all the bad deals that hurt the shop happened while on camera. Some of them came before Pawn Stars was even born. Rick Harrison talked about this one time, and it was quite a story to tell. A man in a sharp suit walked into the pawn shop looking to sell a bunch of what appeared to be valuable diamonds. Harrison stated that he asked the seller all of the right questions, including the date, how he got them, etc. The seller gave all the right answers, even showing receipts and proof of purchase. So by all estimations, he was indeed the owner of the diamonds, and Rick was right to make the sale. But it wasn't going to be that way in the end. Just a few days after buying the diamonds for over $40,000, the police showed up. The police had got a report that the jewelry was stolen by the seller. The police confiscated the diamonds and the girl who originally owned them got all of her belongings back. This left the Pawn Stars in debt after the large purchase, and it was a time that Rick Harrison would rather forget. Rick says that this was the biggest bust he's ever had in the pawn shop. This is fair to say, given that he shelled out $40,000 for those diamonds and got literally nothing back in return. But as we'll reveal later, he wasn't the only Harrison to fall for a diamond scam that almost crippled the store. Number 5. The Guitar Bust During one season of the show, a musician named Vic came in to sell his 1961 Fender Stratocaster. This is actually one of the most legendary guitar brands out there in terms of name value and recognition. For Rick Harrison, he felt an immediate love for the guitar, as he was a fan of Jimi Hendrix, who played famously on a guitar just like this. That would probably be the most recognizable one, period. Given the history of the guitar, and the fact that it was played by a published musician in Vic, Rick Harrison decided to buy the guitar for $55,000. The logic behind it was not only was it a very well-known guitar, but Vic was known enough to add celebrity value. One big problem, though, not a lot of people saw the value that Rick did let alone wanting to pay the $90,000 that Rick was asking for it. Not getting any takers, he put it up for auction and only got $20,000. He lost $35,000 on the deal, and that's really bad. And it goes to show that when it comes to having items owned by celebrities, you need to have more than a niche name to make it sell. Number 4. Austin Healy Sprite Whether it be Pawn Stars or real life, you need to make sure you're careful when buying a car. Because it may seem perfect to start, but once you drive it down the road, you'll find that you might have gotten scammed. That phrase is perfect for when Rick Harrison bought an Austin Healey Sprite. The Austin Healey Sprite is actually a very rare model of this particular brand. They were originally built to be small enough to fit into a bike shed, and only about 29,000 of them were made. If you don't know, the fewer the number of car made, the rarer it is and more valuable it is. Rick was ready to make a purchase, but realized soon that it wouldn't start, which is usually a no-go on the deal. The owner told him that it was just some minor issues, and that it could be patched up easily. So Rick got the car for $5,000. Bad move. 
because Rick took it to a mechanic who revealed it wasn't minor issues. It was actually major ones. Ones that would cost Rick more than what he bought the car for to fix. Thus, he just ate the loss. Rick got hustled. It's been known to happen. I just hate being wrong. Number 3. The Signature When sports memorabilia comes to your door, you never buy an item signed by a famous player unless you're absolutely sure that it's their signature. That's because forgeries are everywhere in the world today, and it can get pretty bad at times. Which Rick Harrison knew about, and yet fell for the oldest trick in the book. A desire to have a rare item. In one episode, a man named Joe came in and had a book that he claimed was signed by legendary and infamous Major League Baseball player, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Any item owned by this man would have been very valuable, and Rick knew that. But he also knew that there were telltale signs that something was off with this item. You see, Shoeless Joe Jackson was illiterate, and thus had one of the most rare signatures out there because he couldn't and wouldn't sign much due to his bad handwriting. Plus, the certificate of authenticity that the customer had was sketchy at best. Even with this knowledge, Rick shelled out $13,000 on it, without even consulting an expert until after the deal was made, which bit him in the end. Because when he did go to the expert, she noted it was fake. Unconvinced, Rick sent it in to another forgery analyzer, and not only did they say it was fake, but that it was a pretty bad one. Rick's passion really hurt him on that one, no doubt. But at least he could take solace in that his son made a bigger screw-up when it came to sports merchandise. Number 2. The Willie Mays jersey. Uniform, the bases he stole, game-winning catches, all kinds of stuff. In another episode, a uniform apparently worn by the legendary Willie Mays was brought before Corey and Chumley. The stitching, the look, the feel, everything was right, but there were two things that were off about it. One of which was pointed out by Chumley of all people. The uniform was claimed to be from 1955, and yet it was in pristine condition. Mays was an outfielder and stole bases a lot, so how was it this uniform showed zero marks of actually being played in? The customer also didn't have any certificate of authenticity on him, which is something almost every sports item needs to prove that it is what it is. But Corey felt it was real, and so he spent $31,000 on it. This was a dumb move. A very dumb move. So dumb that no one would buy it at the outrageous price they were selling it for. So they put it up for auction and only got $19,000 for it. But that's not all. After that, it was revealed that the jersey was 100% fake, and the Pawn Stars reputation was hurt because of this. You're thinking. No, no, I Oh, well, you're I, assuming, which makes an ass out of you. Number one, diamonds are rough. The late old man was not impervious to scams and too good to be true deals. Because when he was running his own shop, he would always go and try to get good diamonds to sell which was a good goal until cubic zirconia started to emerge. What is cubic zirconia? Well, to put it bluntly, it's fake diamonds. Ones that can fool the untrained eye into thinking they were real. As they arrived in Vegas, the old man bought them because he thought they were real. His store lost tens of thousands of dollars because of that action. And he, of course, felt like a fool for falling for such an easy con. Today, the Harrisons know how to search for fake diamonds. But that would have been nice to know when the epidemic started. So what do you think? What do you think of these times when the Pawn Stars really screwed up things? Can you believe the money they lost in some of these deals? Or the trouble they dodged in other cases? Which of these cases do you feel are the most memorable? Let us know in the comments below, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.